let me felicitate with our distinguished fathers of faith and houses that are well represented here, the house of clergy and the house of laity. And let me appreciate the arrangement to ensure that this service takes place, even though one hour above what we usually have. For our meditation today, the theme I want to discuss with you is in the gospel that has just been read, which is John's gospel chapter 13, the first 15 verses. And the theme is humility exemplified. And the story is about how Jesus condescended so low to have washed the feet of his disciples. And he also commanded that we should go and do likewise. Humility means freedom from pride and arrogance. Having a modest opinion or estimates of one's worth an attitude of seeing God as bigger than ourselves. Humility is acknowledging the dignity of every human being. Serving in love. Obedience born out of willingness. Humility is the displacement of self by the enthronement of God in all our activities. In this passage, John chapter 13, the Bible told us of how Jesus gathered his disciples and he was teaching them. That is John chapter 13 verse 1. And when Jesus knew his hour has come, that he should depart from the world unto the Father, having love his own. Jesus, as a father here, knows he's about to die as we commemorate in the Monday, Thursday. He was aware. And so call his children and tell them what he believes to be the highest secret that he wants his children to live, to live for. And also, Jesus called his disciples together and teach them one important virtue of God's kingdom, which is humility. This service teaches us humility and simplifies. And when you look at the concepts of humility within the scriptural perspective, you will notice the following. Humility is when you have power to act but decide to reframe in order to honor humanity. Humility is not servants serving the boss like what we have read, but boss serving his servants. True humility is known when you have all things and power at your disposal, yet you are not being carried away by it as we have in our Nigerian today. True humility, therefore, is when nobody can query you and yet present yourself accountable to people. Clergymen, by our calling, we are responsible to everyone, but we are accountable to God. Remember that in Romans chapter 14, verse 12, Romans chapter 14, verse 12 says, So each of us will give account of our still worship. Humility is not a sign of weakness, but a strength and stability in the midst of abundance and greatness. Humility turns our weakness into strength. Remember in verse 4, John chapter 13, verse 4, 
Jesus rose from supper and lay aside his garments, took towel, and guided himself. There are some garments that Christians must lay aside in order to serve in humility. Jesus stood up and put aside his own prestigious garments, according to that scripture, that he might serve better. There are some garments that if we put them on, we will not be able to serve effectively. We will not be able to serve in love, in humility, as Jesus Christ demonstrated in the passage today. What are the garments that we all put on today and sometimes we have refused to remove them? It's the garment of fame. Reputation has been built and sometimes we are too big to even serve. I have said this on several occasions to many people around me. I was just 10 years old when my late father told me, if you are too big to follow, you will be too small to lead. What are other garments? Garments of educational qualification. There are some people, if you don't put their PhD, their countenance will change. And I always tell them, they won't pay you with PhD in the central bank. Unfortunately, we are passing this thing from generations to generations. I once visited my daughter's school many years ago and they were having parents teachers association meeting so i joined them and they were introducing everyone in the auditorium and when it was my own time i was introduced as mr james or Dedeji, and i stood up and bowed i sat down i didn't see it as anything but I noticed that my daughter's face changed. So when we got home, I said, what really happened? He said, I didn't like the way you were addressed. I said, how do you want them to address? They would have said, venerable HDK R. Garment of money and possession. Sometimes we say, don't you know me? And the question is always, who are you? Just because of what we have or what we control, pride set in. What of garments of connection, prestige, family ties, power and positions? All these ones are garments that will not allow us to perform effectively. I love the way the Bible puts it in Hebrews chapter 12. When you get to verse 1, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Now that you are surrounded with the cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight that can easily enslave us, but rather run the race that is set before you. And in verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. Please, we must know this as we discuss humility. Number one, we are only stewards of all that we have. We are not the owners. Theologically, we talk at all times. God is the giver. We are only the receivers. And all we can do is just to receive God is the owner, is also the sustainer of the same. So the more of God we know, the more humble we become. I love the way Bible puts it in John chapter 3, verse 27. In John chapter 3, 27, John was talking and he said, no one receives anything except that which he has been given from above. And I remember that in the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 4, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 4, 
The Bible tells us that no one taketh this honor except that which has been given unto him according to the word of God. So one thing we must know is that we are only stewards of all that we have. We are not the owner. Number two, none of us is an achiever. We are all receivers of all that we have. Remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, when you get to verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7, Brother Paul was talking there, he said, what do you have that you have not received from God? And if you have received them from God, why are you boasting as if you have not received them? Other things we should know, number three, if it is working for you, it is not your strength. God is the one doing the workings. Do you know that you might be singing and somebody has the microphone, the speaker, the everything and is singing so brilliantly and people will say, we cannot hear him. What is he singing? And somebody else will just gather the meek thing and be drumming just anything. And people will say, ah, what a wonderful singer. All is by the grace of God. Put things in perspective. As long as you put on the above garments that I first mentioned, it will be difficult for you or for me to serve with humility. I said it in the morning somewhere. I said one of the major signs of a true child of God is the level of his humility. Because the more of God you know, the more humble you become. Saul, the man from Tarsus, never knew what humility was all about until he met Jesus on his way to Damascus. His name changed from Saul to Paul. His mentality changed. His aspiration changed. Everything about him changed. And he became a different person. So for you to know, those who have experienced brokenness, those who have met Jesus, it is their level of humility. And that is what Jesus has demonstrated in the gospel read today. The man washed the feet of his disciples. He used towel to clean it up. And even one man said, you will not wash my feet. What type of humility is this one? What type of attitude is this one? He said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no parts in this business. Pride makes you full of yourselves. Why humility makes you full of God. I love the way it is written in John chapter 3, verse 30. When John saw Jesus coming, he pointed to him and said, He must increase, and I must decrease. We are not called to be famous, but we are called to be faithful. And I tell people anywhere, take it easy. A child that has not been born will one day be provost of this cathedral. A child that has not been born will one day be bishop of Lagos West. So I should take it easy. It's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. After all, we brought nothing into the world. And it is certain we will take nothing out of it. For the constraints of time, what the Bible says about humility, humility is covering that all Christians must put on always. It is a garment we must put on always. Even in our relationship with our wives, our relationship with our husbands, we must be full of kind words and be encouraged. 
and not a discourager. Humility attracts favor, not only from God, even from man. I can tell you this free of charge. With humility, they will give to you what you never merited. But with pride, they will take away what you merited from you. And it will just be lagbaja, nothing for you. What is the biblical teaching about humility? Humility prepares a man for God's lifting. When you see a child that is humble and cool-headed, I am telling you a child that will go far. But when you see a child with pomposity and he feels that if it's not there, nothing will happen, everybody must bow. Such a person has gotten to the last bus stop. And that can be substantiated in James chapter 4, verse 10. In James chapter 4, verse 10, the Bible says, God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. It is also in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, the Bible says, If my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, if they will pray, if they will turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven. I will heal their land. And that is the Bible for you. Other things the Bible teaches about humility is either you humble yourself to be exalted or you exalt yourself to be humbled. And that is humiliation. Luke chapter 14, verse 11. Humility comes with wisdom. Whoever is humble is wise. Because it takes nothing from you, it will rather hard to you. Humility allows others to praise you. Humility empowers service. Humility is evidence of a repented life. When many of us here accepted Jesus, what the Holy Spirit said to us was, if you had died yesterday, you would have landed in hell. A lot of us saw our nakedness. A lot of us saw our emptiness. And all we are just saying is that, draw me nearer, nearer, I say, Lord, to you. Oh, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to you. To my song every day, Father, draw me nearer. Oh, draw me nearer, nearer to thee. My song, my song. Every day, Father, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. How to be humble. Let the Holy Spirit be in control of your life. How to be humble. Fill your heart with God's word. Let the word of God dwell richly in you. How to be humble. Always admit you are not the best at everything, anything. Build that mentality. Build that mentality. How to be humble. Recognize your limitations and faults. You, can all, you cannot always be right. And you don't have all the knowledge. And the Bible says, iron sharpens. Nobody has monopoly of knowledge. And the more you know, the more you discover that you don't know. Be grateful for what you have. But for God... Many of us will have been wine, wine typer in our villages today. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. When you make one, admit it. 
but ensure you don't repeat a mistake that you have made because mistake repeated is a decision. Avoid bragging or telling all good stories about you. We used to have a lecturer in those days who always tell us that he never failed. He was always coming first. Is there anybody here who has never failed before? I have failed severally. And I'm whatever I am today by the grace of God. Don't take all the credit. Somebody else will come to this pulpit and do better than I'm doing. Learn to appreciate others. Don't see others as if they don't have anything in their heads. I have a position in life. When you have a superior argument, I pocket my own. And when I'm corrected in the morning, in the afternoon, you will think I've never been corrected the same way. Try to humble yourself. Let me mention this as I pray. Noticeable habits of humble people. Noticeable habits of humble people. Like what Jesus did as of today. Number one, they put others first. They talk less and they listen more. They speak their minds in honesty. I know some people, when they are wrong, they are sincerely wrong. They ask for help when needed. They accept feedback. They always, they are always ready to apologize when wrong. They are quick to forgive, not easily offended. They are always peacemaker. They don't go around saying they are humble, like people will do today in every gathering. We introduce to you so, 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 so. Introduce to you so, 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 and you will now say, my humble self. Who told you you are humble? The Bible says, let your light so shine that they may see. It's not you saying how fantastic you are. And finally, they are master of self-awareness. They easily acknowledge their tendency even to pride. And I've never seen a proud man being loved even by his own people. Do you know, when I was much, much younger in the Episcopal ministry, I traveled one time with the senior ones. And the then primate of our church were just talking about this topic. He said, do you know that two proud people cannot work together? It was the first time to hear it. Two proud people, they cannot work together. And, but humble people will make giant strides. So the lesson we have come to learn, every one of us, is what Jesus demonstrated in that passage. In verse 4, the Bible said, he removed his garment. He laid it somewhere, and he put on another garment, towel, and he washed the feet of his disciple. And I asked myself, can I do this one? How will people even see it when you do such? But that is what Jesus recommended. And if Christ could do that one, we must do likewise. I pray that today's service will not be our last service in Jesus' name. In the next year, 2024, we will be more happier than this in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, I wish you a fantastic Easter and a very joyful Good Friday tomorrow. And on Sunday, by the grace of God, when we'll be singing Hosanna to the Lord that has risen from the dead, we will not be on the wheelchair in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My song every day, Father. Oh, my song, my song. Ah.